good day. Cheerio and jolly good show. This is Phantom Strider. I enjoy the sound of a British accent, which is my flimsy pretense to check out the top five worst British cartoons. Why top five? Honestly, there's only five British cartoons I considered outright bad. From Trapdoor to Farthing Woods to Dreamstone, most British cartoons are downright creative and endearing. And there'll certainly be plenty of room for the best British cartoons. But this is a bad list, so let's check out the worst creations. So what's it like being a bunch of rich, snooty twits? Number five, Horrid Henry. I know what you're thinking. The animation is possible and the soundtrack is acceptable. But just listen. Listen to this kid's voice. Listen up, everyone. I have a very important announcement to make. The voice acting in this cartoon makes me want to burn the nearest British flag. I normally find a little English twang a welcoming and classy accent, but Henry manages to make me loathe the British accent in just one whiny, snooty sentence. The other problem? Henry is a little twerp. He's selfish, mean to his family, and his voice somehow made me lose my love for the English accent. The plus to this cartoon? The music is very well orchestrated well-paced and suits every scene. It's honestly hard to get an outright bad cartoon from England. But Horrid Henry was just too horrid to not be on the list. Hey, look at me. I'm a tea-sucking, loafer-wearing, snooty guy. And for number four, Tugs. Tug. Thomas the Tank Engine's boring, drunk, British older brother. Personally, I think stop motion is a mixed bag at best. Stop motion and animation is challenging to look good and far more likely to just look creepy and uncanny. It's such an awkward, strange form of animation that stop motion really does deserve its own list. I couldn't really keep up with what Tugs was doing. When the British narrator wasn't giving us a long, boring tutorial on the history of boats, Tugs was mostly bickering with other arse-faced boats about nothing. Yeah, that's right. Big Tugs only, ten cents. But again, the voices are so strangely classy and well done. It's near impossible to find a British cartoon that doesn't have exceptionally clear and well done voice acting. But still, Tugs is dull, ugly, unpleasant, and makes an ancient boat history class look thrilling by comparison. Hey, look at me. I'm a tea sucking, loafer wearing, snooty guy. And the number three Dogs. Claymation can be creative. But let's get rid of all that English charm and class and lay out some of the most butt-ugly claymation models we've ever managed. In fact, let's start this episode by watching cavemen pick their noses and kick babies. During these thrilling episodes, the gogs run into stimulating, gripping problems like finding fire, falling asleep at night, and seeing rain clouds in the sky. Aside from the unpleasant animation, Gogs is really tedious. Surely cavemen had slightly more interesting days than this. Then they show us these cavemen El Naturel, seeing their faces as confronting enough as is, yet alone their wings and wangs. But like the majority of British cartoons, it had a plus. In this cartoon, the plus was the music was tolerable and fully orchestrated, but it still wasn't enough to save the most ugly, dull caveman simulation since 15,000 years ago. Hey, look at me. I'm and the second worst British cartoon is Olivia the Pig. Ah, the Uncanny Valley. Is it CG? Is it stop motion? Is it live action? I have no idea, but I want it on fire. Just the way Olivia moves her mouth creeps me out. These pigs look like they're more suited to an Evil Dead movie. The voices are nice, I guess? And the plot is your standard small adventures in a suburban home. But I just can't get by how these pigs writhe and gesticulate on the screen. Is this the brief moment of time David Lynch tried to make a kid's film, but accidentally just made another horror? I mean, look at this, and tell me this doesn't seem like a more suitable voice for Olivia. Yeah! <laughs> this pig must be turned to bacon. 
I've seen undead zombie pirate skeletons that are less disturbing to look at. It is the creepiest kids cartoon I've ever seen. And I just can't look by the abomination that is Olivia. Hey, look at me. I'm and the son. number one worst British cartoon is... Captain Pugwash. Imagine Paddy the Pelican, one of the worst cartoons of all time, if it was somehow even lazier. There are no modern day cartoon luxuries like moving mouths. Animation is optional for our Captain Pugwash. Even the name sounds pugfugly. Their British accents are so thick that I literally can't understand a word they're saying. It moody, Captain. Eh? The dictionary, what you was asking for, Captain. Animation consists of the pirates' mouths flapping slightly up and down occasionally when they feel like it. And the terrible swaying of the waves seems to consist of moving the canvas slightly up and down. They blink sometimes, but that's one of those rare miracle occurrences. I know it was made in 1974, but even Paddy the Pelican managed to animate its characters moving mouths. Not in sync or any particular structure, but at least they animated more than one frame of animation. Find me the ship's dictionary, Master Mate. Wait, what did he just say? Thank without trace, Master Mate. You named one of your pirates Masturbate. Was there really no other name you could have gone with? Matt, John, Clint, Rachel, none at all? You had to go with Masturbate? Pugwash is ugly. It's completely unstructured. It doesn't make any sense. The accents are so thick they almost sound foreign. It is a terrible disaster from ancient times that somehow got aired on public television. And I consider it the number one worst British cartoon of all time. But I really have to mention that most of the British cartoons I watched were witty, clever, beautifully voice acted, and had such a damn original concept. Things like Trapdoor, Farthing Woods, The Dreamstone, Mr. Hell Show, 95% of the time, the Brits seem to have somehow kept their cartoons fresh, original, and charming. So honestly, British cartoons overall, get my thumbs up. If you think I missed a bad British cartoon, feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.